I'm just going to assume that, that you're there, Christina. That's okay. Okay, so just real quick, people that I don't think are here, and you can let me know if you are. Um, Natalie Gage, Leo, Haley. Oh, wait, didn't Haley come in? Haley, are you here? Yeah. Okay, thank you. I thought so. I wonder if I marked somebody else by accident. Okay. Um, Gianna, Nick, Alex, Elizabeth, Marissa, Aaron. Ian. Uh, oh, other Alex. Sorry. Thank you, Alex. You're welcome. Um, da, 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 da. Um, let's see. Carla, Claire, Wayne, Colin, Indigo, Jordan LaForce, Blake, Natalie, Selena, Yasmin. Anybody else that I missed there? Okay, so um, I'm going to go ahead and get started then. Um, you guys can make sure that you are muted. And if you want your videos off, you can have them off. Um, let's see. Okay, so the thing I, I don't know. Jesse, you're good. I saw you. Thank you. Um, okay, so first thing I want to start with, I'm going to share. Uh, a flyer with you guys here. There is uh, an El Molino trivia night that's happening tomorrow night. So I don't know if there's anybody in leadership here that would like to talk about it. Um, I will happily say what I know about it. Um, it is happening tomorrow night at 6.30. I know Hannah Riccioli put it together. Um, she will be sending out an email that has the Zoom invite and um, also the Kahoot code um, to everybody. Um, so look for that email, put it in your calendars at 6.30 tomorrow. Um, I think there's going to be some fun information about um, maybe your teachers, maybe El Molino that you didn't know. I definitely shared some fun things about myself, so you might be able to, to learn some things about me that you didn't know before. Um, so anyway, look for that, um, kind of a fun way to to bring us together during this time when we can't physically be together. So, um, so there's that. What did um, you, say you just broke up. What's that? What did you say you were breaking up a lot? <laughs> um, so April, I'm going to record this. This is being recorded. So if there's anything that you miss, you can go back and watch the recording later. Okay. Sorry. But I was talking about the trivia night. That's tomorrow night. Just kind okay. of, given a plug to that. You'll get an email about that. So, um, okay. Um, I want to spend the majority of today talking about um, what math class, if you're a junior, that you should be signing up to take next year. I know that we've already done signups, um, but I'm sending out a survey later um, because I just want to kind of talk about that a little bit more. So that I'll do kind of after talking a little bit about some of the math from this week um, so that if there are seniors that are here that don't need to worry about taking a class next year, um, you can sign off and you don't have to listen to that part. Um, so I'm going to start off by talking about the math this week. Um, so first thing is, um, you know, you got to see some inverse trig functions this week. Um, so you got to see the new secant and cosecant and cotangent. Um, and those are all just reciprocals of the trig functions you guys are more familiar with, the sine, cosine, and tangent. Um, I wanted to remind you guys that even though you see S-I-N when, when it says sine, don't say sin, say sine. When it says C-S-C for cosecant, don't say c -s -c say cosecant and don't say cot when it says cot say cotangent um, just makes you sound smarter um, in terms of memorizing things because you've got all of these new trig functions these reciprocal trig functions to memorize i would not try to memorize that cosecant is hypotenuse over opposite i wouldn't try to memorize that you guys have the SOHCAHTOA that you can use to remember that sine is opposite over hypotenuse and cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse and tangent is opposite over adjacent. Remember those and then just remember which ones are the reciprocals of each of those. 
So for example, and I'm going to turn on my, um, my document camera to talk to you guys about this. Um, again, don't try to remember that cotangent is adjacent over hypotenuse. Remember that, and let me share this screen with you now that I've got that up and going. Remember that um, cotangent, slide this down here. If I had to do cotangent of an angle, that that is just the reciprocal of tangent, okay? So in other words, I'm gonna figure out what tangent is and then I'm just gonna flip it over, right? So don't try to remember what cotangent is, just remember that it's re the reciprocal of tangent. Don't try to remember that uh, secant is, I don't even know what it is. I've been teaching math for so long, over 30 years. No, I've been doing math for over 30 years, this math anyway, but I haven't been teaching it that long. Anyway, remember that secant is the reciprocal of cosine. So then all you have to do is remember that cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse and then just flip that over. Hypotenuse over adjacent would be secant. And again, that um, cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. So again, I'm not memorizing what cosecant is. I just have to remember that sine is opposite over hypotenuse. And so cosecant is flip that over hypotenuse over opposite. Okay, so don't try to remember what those are, just remember which ones are the reciprocals. Um, and one thing I like to do to remember is this one has a co, so this one does not have a co. See what I mean by co, the co secant. The cotangent has a co, and so the, co so the tangent does not have a co, right? So if it has a co, then it's reciprocal doesn't have a co. If it has a co, it's reciprocal doesn't have a co. The one that doesn't have a co, it's reciprocal does have a co, okay? So that's something that you can um, use to help remember which, one, which ones are which. Reciprocals, um, if the function has a co, it's reciprocal won't and vice versa. Um, one thing that you will see um, in this unit and from, in math from now on is if you see something is greater than zero, like if tangent x is greater than zero, if it says that, what that means is that tangent is positive, okay? So when you see this notation tangent is greater than zero, it just means that that thing is positive. And similarly, if you see that something is less than zero, guess what that means? That, that thing is negative, right? If it's less than zero, it's a negative value. If it's greater than zero, it's a positive value. Um, and so that's just something you can use to help you interpret from math language to the English language. Um, just a lot shorter to write that than it is to write positive. And mathematicians tend to be lazy. And that's not a bad thing. Um, let's see, I, I thought he went through something real fast, so I wanted to talk about, he's, he mentions at one point, all students take calculus. And so I just wanted to kind of talk about that again real quick, um, what that means and why that's helpful. Um, there are questions in the homework about where sine is positive and cosine is negative and that kind of thing. Okay, and so he has this all, students take calculus, which is really just a way to remember the A, S, T, and C. All students take calculus. But really what that stands for is all the trig functions are positive in that quadrant there. Okay, so this is telling us um, which trig functions are positive. Okay, in this one here, sine is positive but cosine and tangent are both negative here. This one tangent is positive, but the other ones are negative here. And over here, cosine is the only one that's positive. The other ones are negative there. So that's just a way to kind of help you remember that. <clears throat> that's all that is. Um, I frankly don't ever use this. It's something um, Miss Lassick teaches too, and it is kind of a nice little trick to remember things. Um, and if you like tricks, it's great, but I think that things will stick in your head better if you understand why things are true. So I want you guys to keep in mind that if this is the x-axis here, 
that x is going to be positive going this direction and x is going to be negative going this direction. And because of that, cosine is always positive in these two quadrants because cosine is the same as the x value, right? So when you go to the right, cosine is always positive. When you go to the left, the cosine is always going to be negative, whether you're up in the second or down in the third quadrant. Because you've gone to the left, the x value is a negative value, and so the cosine is going to be negative. And then similarly, the y value is positive when you go up, the y value is negative when you go down. Okay, and the y is the same as the sine value. And so when you go up, sine is positive. So that's why sine is positive in the first and second quadrants. And when you go down, sine is negative, right? So when you go down, the y values are negative. So that's why sine is going to be negative in that third and fourth quadrant. Okay, so again, that's just a way that you can think through why cosine is positive in the first and the fourth quadrant. Um, and, I, and like I said, I just think it, it helps you remember things better if you can make sense of them. And I think that um, is a way you can think of those where they actually will make sense. Um, better than trying to memorize every possible thing that you learn in math, right? <clears throat> Um, let's see. I was going to go over a few of the, um, let's see, I have four problems that I thought would be good to go over. So if you have your assignment printed out, or if you just want to take some notes on a separate sheet of paper right now, I'm going to go over number five with you guys right now. So let me go back to sharing that, um, my document camera with you. Okay, so again, number five, I'm going to go over with you guys. So if you haven't done that yet, you can do it with me. Um, we are supposed to, I'm reading the directions up above, find the ratio of the trig function indicated. Do not find the actual measure of the angle. So this just says to find the cosecant of theta. Okay, so here's my angle theta. For me, I like to think that cosecant is the reciprocal of which function? Let's see, this has a co in it, so I want one that doesn't have a co. Okay, so I'm remembering that I'm going to use the reciprocal of sine. And so then I think, well, sine SOCOTOA is opposite over hypotenuse. So I'm going to take the opposite over hypotenuse, but I'm going to flip that over. Um, so I am going to, let's see, from this angle here, I know this side here is the opposite. This side here is the hypotenuse. And so again, since sine is opposite over hypotenuse, the cosecant of theta is going to be the hypotenuse over the opposite. Okay, and then I have to take that answer and I have to simplify it, right? Um, so first I'm going to simplify and take that common factor of two out. So divide by two, divide by two. So now I have this eight over one times the square root of 15 or just the square root of 15. And because I can't have that radical in the denominator, I multiply by a root 15 over a root 15. And that gives me in the top eight root 15 and in the bottom, the root 15 times the root 15 would give me a root 15 squared, which cancels out the root. And so cosecant of theta ends up being 8 root 15 over 15. Okay. Um, I'm going to talk about number 13 next. So again, if it's helpful, you can just do that right there on your assignment if you haven't done that one yet. So here the directions say to draw the reference triangle and then find the exact value of the trig ratio. So I'm going to start by drawing my graph and I'm going to plot about where that negative 15, negative 5 will be. So negative 15 in the x direction, negative 5 in the y direction. We'll put it somewhere about there. Connect that to the origin drop to the x-axis to make my right triangle. There is my reference triangle now with theta next to the x-axis. And keeping in mind that this here is a negative 15, this here is a negative 5, and I'm going to get my calculator out so that I can do the 
Pythagorean theorem, so negative 15 squared plus the negative 5 squared, and that's going to give me this hypotenuse here. 225 plus 25, 250. Please chime in if I make a mistake. I'm doing this real fast here. And then C is going to be the square root of 250. And this is a radical that can be simplified because 250 can be divided evenly by the perfect square 25. 25 times what is 250? 10, so I have that square root of 10 there. And then that 25 simplifies to be a five. The root 10 I can't simplify, so now I've got that. So now I have to find secant of this angle theta. So again, I want to think secant is the reciprocal of which one? Secant doesn't have a co, so I know it's going to be a cosine. So I think cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So I'm going to do that upside down. I'm going to flip that over so that the secant of theta is going to be, again, instead of adjacent over hypotenuse, I'm going to do hypotenuse over adjacent. So 5 root 10 over negative 15, and I can divide out a common factor of 5, and that ends up giving me a 1, 3, a root 10 over negative 3. All right. How's that going so far? Any questions there? Okay, if there's no questions there, then I want to go on and talk about number 17. And I'm going to probably do this real fast because I want to make sure I have time to talk to you guys about classes for next year. So again, the directions are draw the reference triangle and find the exact value of the trig ratio. In this case here, it says tangent is negative 15 over 8 where sine is negative, right? That right there, less than zero tells me sine is negative. So that's gonna be in one of those quadrants because if sine is negative, that means I've gone down. Because the tangent is negative, I know that has to be over here because I know tangent's positive here. So then tangent is opposite over adjacent. So there's my negative 15 because I've gone down over eight. Um, and then I'm going to figure out what that length is, either using a Pythagorean triple or uh, using the Pythagorean theorem. And then I'm going to find cosine, which is just the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. Okay. Um, and then finally, number 19, I'll just talk about real quick to find the exact value of the other five trig functions. I'm going to do kind of like I did in that one above where this says quadrant three, so I'm going to draw a triangle here in quadrant three. There's my reference angle. Since tangent is three and I need that ratio, the tangent ratio to be a fraction, I put the three over one. So then I have opposite over adjacent is three over one. I'll use the Pythagorean theorem to find the missing side. And then I'm going to figure out what sine theta, opposite over hypotenuse. What's cosine theta? What's tangent theta? I already know that one. That one was given to me. What is secant theta? What is cosecant theta? And what is tangent theta? You might actually find it easier if you did the secant theta over here next to the cosine theta because those are reciprocals. So if I do the secant theta here and the cosecant theta here, then I can remember just to flip over the sine to get the cosecant. I can flip over the cosine to get the secant, and I can flip over the tangent to get the oops, cotangent. Okay, and again, since this is three over one, cotangent theta becomes one over three. So that's just a quick spiel there. If you are a senior, you can sign out if you would like to. Please let me see your face first before you go. Um, and I am going to talk now about classes for next year um, because it is, yes, Jesse, I'm really hoping we will be back in school in some form or another. Um, and we're just going to assume that everything's going to go back to normal at some point. And then if it doesn't, then we'll deal with it then. 
Um, My dad so. said that the governor is trying to open school back up in the middle of July. Well, the, summer school maybe. We're not going to, Emelina's not going to start in the middle of July. I promise teachers will revolt and it won't happen. <laughs> okay. I don't have much time. So I want to talk about, um, I want to talk about this stuff. So um, everybody, please mute yourselves. Um, seniors again, just wave goodbye and you guys are good to go. Um, okay. So options for next year. Let me start off by talking about that. Um, you have the option of taking AP calculus, AP statistics, um, there's the personal business finance class, but I want to talk about that one because there's a lot of signups for that. And I think that there may be some misconceptions about that. Um, so I want to talk about that. Another option for next year, which I think is actually a really good option if you're not interested in taking one of the AP classes, is to take the uh, Math 3A class. And you might say, well, I'm already taking Math 3, Miss Grassle. Is it going to be the same kind of thing? But it's not. The Math 3A class is a little bit more like a pre-calculus class. Um, and honestly, it will it will do you good for preparing for college. So if you're thinking of going to either a four-year school or to the JC, you are very likely gonna have to take a placement test to get into college. Um, and you will want to stay in some sort of rigorous math class and that Math 3A will really help prepare you for that. If the class, if Math 3 isn't going great for you this year, you could take Math 3 again next year and that would also help get you ready for that college level math if you needed to. Um, so again, that's for people that are not like, oh, I love math. I'm so good at math. But people that are like, all right, I do want to go to college, but math isn't really my thing. Um, think about maybe taking math three again, or maybe math three A. Um, so on that note, um, let me give just a couple more little details. So calculus is definitely a STEM kind of thing. If you're interested in going any kind of science, technology, engineering, math, um, anything along those lines, um, calculus is a great class to take. It gets you ready for those. The statistics class is a great class for getting you ready for so many other different majors in college, like psychology, criminology, business, political science, it gets you ready for all kinds of things that aren't quite so STEMI, um, but are really, really valuable. And a lot of our um, former students have ended up having to take statistics in college. Um, and so even if you end up not taking the AP exam, that statistics class is great getting you ready for that. Um, it is important to keep in mind that both the AP classes are taught at a, at a college level and so they have high expectations. They are going to be a lot of work, um, but there's big payoff because it's getting you ready for that next level. So, so keep that in mind. It's, it's worth putting the effort in. Um, and then let me talk in a little bit more detail about the personal business and finance class. Um, like I said, we had a lot of people sign up for it. Um, we don't have our own textbooks for it, but Annalie has textbooks that we would have to borrow for it, but it would only be like one class worth of textbooks we can borrow. And we had like 54 people sign up for it. We don't have room for 54 people to take it. And so, um, you know, we're hoping to kind of have people go, well, maybe that's not the best option for me so that you could remove yourself from that list so that people that do really want to take it, still have the option to take that class. Um, keep in mind that that class is elective credit. It is not math credit. Um, it is not preparation for college level math. Um, it is not going to be doing stuff that will prepare you for um, a math placement test that you might have to take to go into a JC or a four-year college. Um, it does have some really valuable things, you know, we're planning on having it cover things like debt and mortgages and stocks and, um, you know, just balancing a checkbook and, and that sort of thing. So I think it does have some value to it, but it's just really important that you guys know that you don't get math credit for it. There will be math involved in it, but it's not going to be the kind of math that's going to help you when you go on to college. So um, I have a survey all ready to go that I'm going to push out to you guys, um, you know, as soon as we're done talking about this here. Um, 
where you guys will kind of let me know what you're thinking in terms of what you want to do for um, math for next year. Um, so, and if you have other questions um, besides what my survey is um, letting me know about, um, please reach out. Please don't hesitate to ask. Um, if you know you signed up for something and now you're feeling like, I really don't want to take that class, um, I'm going to share the survey results with the counselors. They won't make any moves without checking with you first, um, but they will have the information that you are interested in something else. Um, but you may want to reach out after this conversation and say, all right, Ms. Camacho, Ms. Saldana, I really, really want to switch. Um, and that way you can make sure that that happens. Um, one last thing I wanted to share with you guys is this, um, this is something that we got from the JC. So this is, um, the JC considers the following transfer level math classes. And the, um, the ones here in this column are the STEM math, well, I can't, did I cut part of it off? Or is it up there? Dang it, I must've cut part of it off. Okay, so these are like STEM classes. There you can see the pre-calculus, the pre-calculus with algebra, the pre-calculus with trig. Um, and that's what our Math 3 and our Math 3A classes are doing is kind of getting you ready for that level. Um, and so you may, after taking our class, test beyond that and be able to, you know, go straight into some sort of transfer level math. Um, if you're more interested in, um, you know, business and political science and that kind of thing, this is the kind of um, math that you would take in terms of that. And I can't, I wish I could see what I had up there. I can't see it. Maybe if I stop sharing, I'll be able to see it. Um, but you can see the statistics is in both of these here. Okay. And that is the transfer level math that allows you to be able to transfer from the JC to a four year. Um, and I'm going to see if I open that in a different window, if I might be able to get a better visual of that so that I can give you guys better information about that. Um, but does anybody have any questions on that stuff that I just talked to you guys about? Um, classes for next year, what, what to sign up for, that kind of thing? You guys feel all right about that? And you can unmute yourself if you think of a question. Otherwise, if you guys wouldn't mind turning on your videos before you go, unmuting yourself and saying a goodbye so I get to see you one more time. Goodbye. Bye, Ms. Grasso. Bye. Bye, everybody. Good to see you. Bye, Bye Ms. Grasso. Bye. Bye. Goodbye. Bye, Jesse. Bye, Bye Miss Grassle. Bye, Trenton. Bye, Caden. Um, so like Miss Saldana said that the math, the other the other math class, the business and finance counted for math credits when we were like when she told everyone about it. So I don't know. Um yeah, I was just talking to Mr. Dunkel about it before I put this information out to you guys just to make sure that I had it accurate. And um, that is what um, that is what what I know. Um, so I will uh, make sure Miss Saldana gets that information um, so that, um, you know, that doesn't cause confusion in the future. So okay. I was just just making sure, just one Mary. You know. Yeah, yeah, no, I appreciate that. And um, and I will double, double check and um, I will let you guys know as soon as possible if it is in fact math credit. Um, but like I said, I don't think it is. Um, I'm positive that it, it is not. Okay. Um, but I will confirm, so. All right. Yeah, well, thanks Ethan. Yep, see you later. Talk okay, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.